Hi, you guys. Okay, The Handmaid's Tale, Season 5, Episode 2, Ballet. And the episode opens up with June. She can't sleep up there obsessing over Serena. The fact that Serena is moving on with her life. Um, she's going back to Gilead to bury her husband like uh, sensible people can do. And June, she can't help it. She's thinking about all the stuff that her and Serena been through. I guess it got so bad for June that June had to get up in the middle of the night and go bury that gun that Danielle gave her. I think that's her name. I think that was the best sound decision that June has made. Just so she won't make no erratic decisions. Go blow Serena head off in Canada and then she'll be held accountable for it. Serena is on her way back to Gilead to bury that monster of hers. And Mark is her escort. Now, how safe would Serena be with Mark considering what happened to Fred? I don't know. I can't ensure her safety. Serena herself looks uneasy about what awakes her. Not only the fact that Fred and transported when he was transporting, he was murdered, but the fact that she's on her way back to her native land and her husband was a traitor. They were getting ready to turn on Gilead. That's scary. Finally, Serena makes it into Gilead. In Gilead, they gave her all the pleasantries and condolences. Lawrence and Nick, they was there to greet Serena. And they let her know that the Putnams, they're going to host a wake for Fred. Serena, she want to get right to it. She want to go see the church where they will be holding services for Fred. They get to the church and Serena's like, what is this? This isn't fit for one of the founding fathers of Gilead. Lawrence tells Serena, well, I thought out of respect, we should just make it quick, quick as possible so you can get back to Canada and start your new life. Serena cuts right to the bullshit. She says, you know, Fred, he looked like a pack of wolves and toy to him. And we know who's all behind this and we, I know that she didn't act alone. Now, what if the other commanders found out that you didn't help a handmaid kill her commander? I encourage you to give Fred a proper funeral. And Lawrence, that doesn't move him. He's like, my hands are tied. Serena, like, look, find a way. Lydia's over here getting all the handmaids prepared for a day of mourning. Then she seems to have little big mama under control. <laughs> She's not giving Miss Trunchbull evil her sister, Miss Lydia, the blues these days. Lydia tells Janine that she's been doing a good job. And the Putnams, they're looking for a handmaid and Esther is up next. Lydia is so proud of Janine. She's like, I hope that y'all can all shine like this together. And Janine asks her, do you think that I could visit her sometimes at the Putnams? And Lydia says, like, don't get ahead of yourself, honey. <laughs> Putnam's don't want Janine is over there. They a cigar. They done had enough of her for a lifetime. <laughs> At the wake, as soon as Serena and Mark walks through the door, okay, they walk. Um, the Putnam's welcome in Serena. Um, give them her condolence. And Mark, he had to sit his ass down somewhere and don't move. They done gave him a plate of food and everything. Mm-hmm. This is where your Roman ends. Sit down. Serena looks like she feels a bit uneasy. Just a few weeks ago, Naomi was in her damn jail cell at the jailhouse luxury suites. Talking about her and the other wives was trying to take the baby and that she'll be okay. You know, just trying to um, get Serena baby. And bring them back to Gilead. Serena, she doesn't trust these bitches. She spots Lawrence and she excuses herself. And so Serena goes up to him and like, so did you make that happen? And Lawrence tells her, look, everyone think that the arrangements that we set up is proper. Reminds Serena that you can go on and try to get ahead of me and, you know, talk to the men in the council. But um, a woman's word doesn't trump the man. Also, it's a lingering feeling around here that Fred was a traitor. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, Gilead never forgets that. They're not going to forget that. This got me thinking about what is in store for Serena. 
Fred is dead. She cannot get away with things that she did when Fred was alive and with her. Serena isn't a weak-minded woman. Remember, she's the one who put the battery in Fred's back to create Gilead. It was her book that inspired him. This will be interesting to see how she navigate Gilead and if she choose to go back. She, and I think she would definitely need a husband. Um someone that she can make another frankenstein out of in control last time they took her they cut off her finger the next time no telling what will happen or maybe they'll turn her into a handmaid stay humble serena joy uh, lydia comes through with her handmaids and it seems that she's not fond of mark or was it because mark didn't know who she was also lydia made Serena a little uncomfortable by telling her she was um excited that Serena was pregnant and she tells Serena that she's a marvel and we know that uh, Lydia she wants to get these ladies pregnant she believing in the system and um I think she got her eyes set on uh, Serena like yeah you come back here I'm gonna marry you off and you're gonna have some more babies Esther, she's trying to stay in control like Janine and coaching her to, but she is just so ready to do something, very much something. Janine keeps telling her the best thing to do is to do what you, your ex and just lay low. Esther needs someone to be blunt with her. She's immature. And also, she's only 15, 16. And she's anxious. She's been through trauma. And thanks to June, a murder is on her mind. Janine, Janine, she's dealing with Esther by baby feeding her with um, that submissive shit. And that's not going to do it because little big mama, she's on go. But she remains cool at the moment like janine is telling her to mrs putnam she has doubts because not only the fact that esther is young but she also been married and lydia adds to it telling her well because esther was married before she understands the respect that you deserve this seals the deal with naomi she's like yeah okay good she's a keeper janine she got to see baby angela she ran straight to janine yep because she knows J that's spiritual she know her mama when she see her <laughs> she ran up to janine and she gave janine a, the biggest hug and janine she played it cool even when miss putnam called angela to come on um janine she took it she took it like a g she let her go and janine told her you have a wonderful daughter and um miss putnam is like yeah and i thank god for her every day she also tells janine and i thank god for the people that brought her here every day and i'm like oh that was sweet of her and for some reason i think janine has a plan i don't know what it is but i think she does after she goes to meet mr putnam and um Aunt lydia is taking her in there and it is a room full of guys. <laughs> they bring in this, this this young child. He eventually asks everyone to leave out, including Lydia. Lydia is looking confused. And this is what, um, was it Janine that told, told her that? Or it was um, June. They told her, like, you talk all this shit, but you don't even understand the things that we go through. You, you prepare us for these animals. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm thinking more and more that Lydia is starting to see that very clearly. It's not not the fact that she did she knows that um how the system works. I think Lydia Lydia is starting to realize this is going beyond just uh trying to bring children into uh, the world. I think is I think she's seeing more and more that this is about assaulting women you know when he's alone with esther he tries to convince her that she's doing uh god's blessing she's a, a blessing which he'll be getting to know better in a very uncomfortable way and he tries to reward her with chocolates what is up with people in these sweets around here and these handmaids that they think they can give handmaids some cookies or candies and uh, everything will be all right. Like, that's so gross. So right now she decides that she's going to try to talk to the council despite of what Lawrence told her. 
So she goes in, they decide to see her um, nonchalantly. And she said that um, she wanted to put this event together so she'll have something that her son can be proud of. She wants to show him the legacy that his father created along with the rest of the other men. He tells them he dedicated his life to this. Maybe it's time that we show the world Gilead. If we want to be respected, then I think that we need to show them that we grieve just like them. I sh it should be an international event broadcast across the globe. Everyone in the council is can give a fuck about what Serena want. And they think that it's her hormones because she's pregnant and going through this grief. Lawrence, he decides to stand up for her. And he adds to it that it's about time that they show the world their humanity. They're always showing they, their fist. Mr. Putnam, he did. Um, begs to differ he's like why should we listen to you you don't adhere to our way of life you have no wife you have no kids you have no family lauren said listen y'all keep missing the opportunities time after time that can lead to better opportunities this is our peer we cannot miss this public opportunity putnam said well he was a traitor how would that make us look nick steps in he said we will look merciful he was what he was but let's honor his sacrifices and serena said sacrifices they yield to a miracle I was made fruitful by his grace. Lawrence said, a symbol that can increase the acceptance of Gilead so we can finally take our rightful place in the world. So they are going to pull on these strings, um, have the world have sympathy and empathy for them. Child, they about to put on a circus out here. They actually told uh, Serena that they'll, they have to talk and they'll get back to her. But I think they about to put on for Gilead. Back in Canada, and I made a mistake and I put this on my last review, getting it mixed up. I'm sorry about that. But um, it's game night. June has Rita. It's Rita, Mora, Luke. In June, they're, they're having a game night, having some drinks. And they pull out the Scrabble game. And this triggers June. Rita, she's still over here making bread. And she <laughs> she goes to check on her bread. And June is hot on her heels. She go over there and she like, you heard about Serena? She's going back to Gilead to bury Fred. Rita's like, yeah, I heard. And, and she's trying to sympathize with June. And June is like, remember she slapped you in your face? And Rita isn't trying to go there. And she's telling June to stop. Uh, Mora comes in. She sees June trying to bring this anger out in Rita. Rita has to tell June, like, look, even though I was a, a handmaid, I suffered just as much. And I'm over here dealing it the best way that I can. And you're not going to tell me how to deal with it, June. June is trying to instigate. I don't know what she type of fix do she get with that, with putting stuff in people's head, getting them riled up so they can go over Gilead, grab Serena, bring her back to no man's land and kill her. Is that what you're trying to do right now, June? Maura actually had to tell June, look, stop it, June. Later on that day, Luke and June are talking and June comes out and tells Luke that Serena knows that she sent Serena Fred's finger when she cut it off. And Luke is like, what is wrong with you? Are you crazy? You want her to come and hunt you down and kill you? We're trying to get our daughter. This is no longer about our daughter. You have to stop obsessing over her. This is consuming you. Luke tells you, you need to be here. This is where your family is. If you're not here, what happens to us? Serena is gone. You won. She can't hurt you. Let her go. Forget her fuck her you said you're right fuck her lawrence brings serena some good news they decided to grant her wishes and give fred a grand farewell Serena, she gets the planning right away while mark tries to get nick to become a secret asset in gilead for canada mark tells nick that the u.s is aware of uh nick's mercury pass and is willing to forgive it and Nick tells him, well, okay, I'll think about it. On the way back to the Red Keep, Esther tells Janine that she does not want to go to the Putnams. And Janine tells Esther, you need to make your commander love you and get you pregnant right away. Esther is like, 
She's confused. Like, really? Okay. Janine said it's your only protection. So you get inside. Esther brings some cake that she took from the week. And she's sharing it with Janine. Esther is talking to Janine. And she said, you know, I didn't like you when I first met you. And I feel like I was right the first time. So this throws Janine off. She's like, what are you talking about? So tells her, you don't really like me. You're using me just like the rest of them. You talked all that shit just so you can see your daughter today. He tries to tell Esther, no, I was trying to help you. A little big mama, she takes some cake and she said, I'm going to make June proud. Takes a bite of the cake and she starts vomiting, vomiting blood violently. Janine is freaking out and she too starts to vomit. Janine was able to scream so they can get some help and it looks like little big mama is dead and I'm upset I'm upset because this is what they were supposed to be doing over in Gilead bringing it to its knees I'm gonna need little big mama to get up off that floor and lastly it's Fred's funeral Serena she's preparing all black June said it's a beautiful death let's all wear white June, we and we see that she still has her ties to Gilead with her tag on her ear. June and Luke, they're off to the ballet. Remember that ballerina in a box that Serena gave June and how June felt like the ballerina was like her, uh, trapped in a box. June is watching a show. She began to become more free, I noticed. And notice that the ballerina is also wearing blue. And how when we would see the ballerina perform, we also seen um, scenes of Serena. With that, I'm thinking that we also seen it's also symbolizing freedom in Serena. May It may not be blatant freedom because she can only do so much in Gilead. But Serena used this opportunity to be the poster child for Gilead. Her going from the bearing woman, becoming fruitful by his grace, will be the cherry on top for Gilead's image. June and Luke, they leaves out the ballet, and June seemed refreshed and happy. While Gilead, they put on for their city, on, on for their city. Gilead is putting Fred away like he's a saint. We have everyone outside. Nice and polished. Handmaids, Martha's, eyes, friendlies. They out there having a parade. And they have their children. Gilead claim is that they does what they do to ensure the circle of life, right? So they got to show the babies. Tell me how come they had Hannah out there. She goes up to Serena and give her some flowers. And Serena gives Hannah a kiss on the cheek. Serena, she turns around and she smiles for the camera. And they're filming internationally. So June and Luke both sees this and they are disgusted. June can now taste murdering Serena. And I think Luke is on board for becoming just like June. To seeing this and his face is disgusted. Serena Joy, she said, checkmate, bitch. She got them by the balls. How will this end? Who will be the last woman standing? We have to wait and see. And that's it for this episode. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.